Dear great surgeons, the adductor canal just like the elbow in the upper limb, the adductor canal is very important joint landmark in the lower limb. It's called hunter's canal or subsartorial canal because it's below the sartorius. It's immediately distal to the apex of the femoral triangle and lying in the middle third of the thigh. The canal terminates at the adductor hiatus. The borders are frequently accessed in the exam. The borders are laterally the vastus medialis muscle and posteriorly the adductor longus and adductor magnus and the roof by the sartorius. The contents of the adductor canal, the saphenous nerve, the superficial femoral artery and superficial femoral vein. Take care, the saphenous vein isn't within the adductor canal. There is the only thing within the adductor canal, the saphenous nerve, superficial femoral artery, superficial femoral vein while the saphenous vein is not in the adductor canal. And by the way, regarding the adductor canal, the foramen marking for the distal limit of the adductor canal is contained within the adductor magnus. The vessels buzzing through the region enter the popliteal fossa. Dear great surgeon, you have to differentiate between the long saphenous vein and the short saphenous vein, and the nerve accompanies the veins. The short saphenous vein accompanies the sural nerve, so the sural is short, remember, sural, short, while the long saphenous vein, the great saphenous vein, with the great saphenous nerve. So, the great saphenous vein and great saphenous nerve, they pass in front of the medium malleus, while the sural and the short behind the lateral malleus. Dear great surgeon, take care. The adductor canal compression syndrome most commonly present in young male, and it's an important differential diagnosis in men presenting with symptom of acute limb ischemia, especially on exertion. So, it's caused by compression of the femoral artery by the musculocutaneous band from the adductor magnus muscle. The treatment consists of division of the abnormal band and restoration of the arterial circulation. The popliteal fossa entrapment is the main differential diagnosis. However, the pulse disappears when the knee is fully extended. So, to make it simple, if the pulse present when the knee is fully extended and the patient is presenting with the compression syndrome, it's adductor canal compression syndrome. While if the pulse is absent, we are talking about popliteal fossa entrapment. Again, we have adductor canal compression syndrome and popliteal fossa entrapment. If it's adductor canal compression syndrome, the pulse will be present when the knee is fully extended. While if the pulse disappear, if the knee fully extended, we are talking about popliteal fossa entrapment syndrome. Take this piece of wisdom. A small muscle like a biform, yet it divides the greater sciatic foramen into two components and the contents arranged according to the pyriform. If above the pyriform or below the pyriform, the greater sciatic nerve, which is the largest nerve in the body, is below the small negligent pyriform. Be special in your life just like the pyriform, no matter how small you think you might be, but even you can make difference and make even the sciatic nerve how great it is and how important it is be below you because humble wins. The femoral triangle is very common question in the exam and you have to master all the triangles you face. So let's take the femoral triangle. Medially, you will find the adductor longus while superiorly the inguinal ligament and laterally the famous sartorial muscle which is a famous landmark for the subsartorial canal and the adductor longus forms the medial border of the femoral triangle. It's closely related to the long saphenous vein as well as which overlies it and the profunda branch of the femoral artery. The femoral nerve is related to it inferiorly. However, the tendon of the iliacus inserts proximally and is not contact with the adductor longus. Again, the tendon of the iliacus inserts proximally and not in contact with the adductor longus. So, 
the femoral triangle again, medially adductor longus, superior inguinal ligament, and laterally the sartorial muscle. These great surgeons. Biceps femoris rupture is very common in athletes and especially sprinters, and the patient will be presented with a pain which worsens and localizing to the lateral aspect of the knee. And the patient and the sprinter will be unable to flex the knee. So, the biceps femoris is commonly injured in this sport and require explosive bending of the knee as seen in sprinting, especially if the athlete has not warmed up early so you have to warm up first before going through a rough tough sprint avulsion most commonly occur where the long head attached to the ischial tuberosity and injury to biceps femoris are more common than other hamstring muscles the hamstring muscles and the biceps femoris semitendinosus and semimembranosus and by the way the short head of biceps femoris may be occasionally absent so take care and it's innervated by the common peroneal component of the sciatic nerve while the long head is innervated by the tibial nerve all of you know that the sciatic nerve end by branching into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve and in mrcs they like to kill the component of the sciatic nerve of the common peroneal nerve as the fibular head very common by all means they will shotgun gun and knife cutting and even crushing limb they will kill the common peroneal component of the sciatic nerve by all means so take care dearest great surgeons so by now you all notice that the common peroneal nerve is very important topic in the exam and very recurrent question in the exam so the common peroneal nerve is the intro of the sciatic nerve which divides in the common peroneal nerve and tibial nerve the common peroneal nerve derived from the dorsal division of the sacral plexus from L4, S5, uh, L4, L5, S1, and S2, from L4 to S2. This nerve supplies the skin and fascia of the anterolateral surface of the leg and dorsum of the foot. And take care, when we are talking about the common peroneal nerve, we are talking about the superficial and the deep. So we are talking about the whole dorsum of the foot. Because the superficial division of the common peroneal nerve only supplies the dorsum except for the first web space supplied by the deep. And this is a very trick, common trick in the exam. So, it also innervates the muscle of the anterior and peroneal compartment of the leg, the extensor, digitorum, brevis, as well as the knee and ankle and foot joints. So, it's laterally placed within the sciatic nerve. From the bifurcation of the sciatic nerve, it passes infralaterally in the lateral proximity part of the popliteal fossa under the cover of biceps femoris and its tendons to reach the posterior aspect of the fibular head. And this is the most common site for injury, by the way. It ends by dividing into deep and superficial peroneal nerve at a point where it winds around lateral surface of the neck of the fibula and the body of the peroneus lungs, approximately about 2 cm distal to the apex of the head of fibula, and it's a palpable posterior to the head of fibula. Again, it's palpable posterior to the head of fibula, and this is the most common site to be injured. The branches again in the thigh, the nerve to the short head of biceps, the articular branch, and the popliteal fossa, the lateral cutaneous nerve of the calf, and at the neck of fibula, superficial and deep peroneal nerves. And now regarding to the deep peroneal nerve. The origin of the deep peroneal nerve, as we all agree, it's from the common peroneal nerve itself, which is a branch from the sciatic nerve itself, at the lateral aspects of the fibula, deep to the peroneal lungs. The nerve root for deep peroneal nerve is L4, L5, S1, and S2. L4 to S2, just like the common peroneal nerve, to make it simple. The course and the relation, it pierces the anterior muscular septum to enter the anterior compartment of the lower leg and pass anterior down to the ankle joint midway between the two malleoli. Again, passes anterolateral down to the ankle joint midway between the two malleoli and terminates in the dorsum of the foot. So, it innervates 
the TPI's anterior extensor has the longest extensor digitorum longus and perineus tertius, as well as the extensor digitorum provis. So, the deep perineal nerve innervates the anterior compartment of the leg, and we all know that the leg have four compartments. The cutaneous innervation of the deep perineal nerve is very tricky because the first web space and the second two is innervated by the deep perineal nerve while the whole dorsum of the foot is innervated by the superficial branch of the common perineal nerve. The action is dorsiflexion of the ankle, extension of all toe, and eversion of the foot. Take care, extensor halus longus and extensor digitorum longus cause extension of the toes. This is the deep perineal nerve. After its bifurcation, pass to the ankle joint, the lateral branch of the deep perineal nerve innervates the EDB and the EHB. The medial branch supplies the web space between the first and second dish. Dear great surgeons, take care. The peroneus longus and peroneus brevis in the leg are in the lateral compartment, while the peroneus tertius in the anterior compartment. And we all know that the anterior compartment of the leg is innervated by the deep peroneal nerve, while the lateral compartment is um, innervated by the superficial branch of the common peroneal nerve, the superficial peroneal nerve. This is the trick. The tertius is the anterior and supplied by the deep, while the longus and the brevis are supplied by the superficial. Take care. So let's sum up and revise again. In the thigh, we have three compartments, the anterior, the medial, and posterior compartment. The anterior compartment of the thigh supplied nerve supply by the femoral, while the medial compartment supplied mainly by the obturator, while the posterior compartment by the sciatic. The blood supply of the anterior compartment by the femoral artery. So, the anterior compartment of the thigh is supplied by the femoral artery and nerve, while the medial compartment of the thigh supplied by the obturator nerve and the profound femoral artery and obturator artery so obturator nerve and obturator artery the posterior compartment is supplied by the sciatic nerve and branches from the profound femoral artery and the muscles in the anterior compartment of the thigh are the iliacus tensor fasciae sartoris and quadriceps femoris they are pretty famous the whole trick in the medial compartment which is about the adductor longus magnus and brevis as well as the gracilis and obturator externus never forget them while the posterior compartment of the thigh consists of the hamstring muscles the semitendinosus semimembranosus and the biceps and always remember that the biceps is lateral in the upper arm is lateral and in the thigh as well it's lateral while the semitendinosus and semimembranosus are medial the compartment of the leg we have four compartments, anterior, posterior, and lateral. And remember always that the posterior have superficial and deep. So, regarding the leg compartment, the anterior compartment nerve supply is the deep renal nerve, while the posterior compartment by the tibial nerve, while the lateral compartment by the superficial perineal nerve. And always remember that the deep renal and superficial perineal are the terminal branches of the common perineal. And remember that the common perineal and the, and the tibial nerve are the terminal branches of the sciatic. So, let's sum up again. The anterior compartment by the deep perineal nerve and the anterior tibial artery. While the lateral compartment by the superficial perineal nerve and the anterior tibial artery. While the posterior compartment deep and superficial by the tibial nerve and the posterior tibial artery. The very famous trick in the compartment of the leg is regarding the perineus longus and tertius and the brevis. The perineus longus and brevis are together in the lateral compartment of the leg, while the perineus tertius is the anterior compartment of the leg. And the whole trick will be about the blood supply and nerve supply of the perineus tertius. He wants to know that you know that the perineus tertius, that this tricky muscle, is in the anterior compartment, and the anterior compartment is innervated by the deep perineal nerve and the arterial supply by the anterior tibial artery or not. Dear great surgeons, a very common question in the exam about Lloyd Davis position. Lloyd Davis position 
is commonly used in pelvic and rectal surgery where the axis is required from both abdominal and perineal aspect. It's somehow like the lithotomy. It's known as Trendelenburg with legs apart. The Lloyd Davis position also known as the Trendelenburg with legs apart or head down lithotomy. It's defined as supine position of the body with hips flexed at 15 degree as a basic angle and 30 degree head down tilt. The importance of Lloyd, Lloyd Davis position in the MRCS exam regarding the nerve injury associated with it. Peroneal nerve injury is very common with Lloyd Davis position because it can carry the risk of peroneal nerve neuropraxia if not done carefully. Dear great surgeon, regarding the inguinal hernia repair, especially the open technique, while attempting open technique hernia repair, hernioplasty, especially in adult because herniotomy is done in children, the hernioplasty carries a very high risk to ilioinguinal nerve injury. While a very tricky question in the records you will face about weakness in the right leg after nerve block during inguinal hernia repair, which nerve have been affected? It will be the femoral nerve. It's a matter of incidence. During the nerve block, it's very common to injury or do even neuropraxia for femoral nerve, which will cause weakness of the right leg. Take care from this trick and remember it and keep it in mind. So common is common. The common nerve to be injured is ilioinguinal nerve. But read the question carefully. What is the muscle that affected and what is the lesion? And you will understand it pretty well. So let's continue the nerve lesions. An old man developed a drop foot after revision of total hip replacement or after RTA you found a patient with foot drop you have to be suspecting the sciatic nerve injury this may be done after a number of approaches and this scenario posterior approach in the hip replacement is the most likely culprit to cause sciatic nerve injury these great surgeons regarding the deep posterior compartment in the lower limb we have the tibial posterior, the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve, and the flexor hansus lungs. But the shorter nerve is superficially sighted and therefore not contained within the deep posterior compartment. The shorter nerve found behind the lateral malleus. You can touch it with your foot. Put your foot behind your lateral malleus. Yes, just like this. This is the shorter nerve along with the short saphenous vein. So, let's revise again the anterior compartment of the leg. It contains tibialis anterior, extensor digitorum longus, perineus tertius, as well as extensor hallucis longus. While it's innervated by the deep perineal nerve and the arterial supply, anterior tibial artery. This is the anterior compartment. While the deep posterior compartment are the tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus, and flexor digitorum longus, and popliteus. The plantaris muscle lies within the superficial posterior compartment of the leg. Remember, the plantaris muscle within the superficial posterior compartment of the leg. Remember, the leg has anterior compartment, lateral compartment, as well as posterior, deep, and superficial.